Uh, do we have topics for this week? No clue. The sun's out. It's hot. Welcome to another episode of the American Beer Review Podcast. Good times with good friends requires good beer. Lucky for us, we know how to pick all three. We're a group of friends who grew up in the Pacific Northwest, giving us a jump start on our craft beer journey. Join us today while Brian... I pride myself on not getting to know other people, so do not put that on me. <laughs> Alec. So the bananas up until like the 60s were an entirely different species of banana. And Chad. It hit me like a wrecking ball. <laughs> Review some beer, talk about beer topics, and whatever else comes up. We invite you to pour yourself a drink and hang out with us. The sun's out, it's hot. It I is. kept seeing a whole bunch of like beer news that i was like oh that'd be good and then didn't save any of them save or send any of them i don't know an easy way to save it from like the apple news into like Discord you should be mode. able to still co- collect a uh hyperlink and just put yeah, it in there i didn't do that um because we're both on iphone so we could just pull them up then well did you see you pr- of course you didn't see it the one i pulled it from a like a another email that i'm on like a it's called the Taster Tray. It's done by Kendall Jones from the yeah, Washington yeah, yeah, Beer yeah. Blog, and I think one of the guys from Rubens. But I copied and pasted the uh, the link, and look at how long it is. Oh wow! Yeah. It, it's just like I'm like oh, okay, okay, like whatever. Can't at least it Somebody also does show them like the Bitly. Yeah, right. Like, and it's just whatever like happens in the system that it just like collects all the yeah. And you just, if it were to something other than just our like little group, yeah, you clean thing. It up I would figure yeah. out how to clean it up, but I didn't care enough. All right. Um, oh, okay. So I'm I'm now seeing the full. Oh, yeah. oh, and also we are watching Game Seven of the Kraken. Uh, yeah, just FYI for yeah how and when we're recording another this. second so, second in a row of an after work yeah episode. So well, we might be we did that was that the last one we did? Yeah, yes. well technically it wasn't an after work episode for me because I wasn't employed oh, yeah, at the right. time. But yeah, and, it was a it was a traditional after work happy hour time. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. So no, if there are random screams shelter or, yeah, or stifled or, like or like grunts minutes yeah. of silence, there might, <laughs> we might be on a power play. Anyway, uh you guys want to get started with a beer? Yeah. This one looks awesome. So, I know. I'm seeing more an, about the... This was another, oh, hey, I saw the can. And then I add to cart. Um, it is posterable in the almost opposite of the last one. Like painting. Yes. Oh, yeah. Uh, pretty. So anyway, Brian, you already it's, looked it, it up? I I'm immediately looking went now. to Deep Thoughts by Jack Handy when I saw it. <laughs> What's that? It was uh, an SNL... Kind of like um, a Bob Ross-ish. Oh. Nah, not really, but... It yeah. was like scenes of nature and a guy All right. talking with a very serene voice, but yeah. it was absurd oh. jokes. I'm already seeing that I'm going to need more information because when I typed in the name of this, so this is a beer from, uh, I believe, Humble Forager yeah, it Brewery, is. and the name is Coastal Sunrise. It is a fruited sour ale. Oh, no, but I have... A uh, pastry sour pastry ale. Sour I have sour. version one, blueberry maple syrup, yeah. vanilla, vanilla, oh, okay. cardamom... No, um, like so, the one we're drinking today. So, Coastal Sunrise Pastry Sour Ale, apricot, orange, cinnamon, cranberry, vanilla beans, plum, and brown sugar. Hey, Found this it. is a uh, swirler. Oh, definitely. At, I saw. Uh, I didn't. I left some in the glass for. Okay. For, you got, the, at, to add your guys's. Make sure you get a okay. little bit of the uh, vegan. The I, yeah, because the pastry when we should have uh, should have rolled it. Is that what we're thinking? Yeah, well, I could feel it yeah. coming out a little chunkier. Near the end. the end, so of you, it. you guys are gonna get a little. He's gonna pour some of the chunk in, and there you go. Um, I'm trying to find an ABV on the can. Six percent. Yep. Well, you didn't even have the right. No, I did. I found it. It's version oh, okay. seven. As you were listing them all off, oh, okay. I found, found it. like all. It's listed by all the like things in there. Oh, there it is. Um, yeah, six percent. Yeah, I got six. Humble Forge Brewing, Wanaki, Wisconsin. They're calling it a. a a breakfast pastry inspired sour. Yeah, so imagine like a a Danish. It's got a sour smell. 
I'm not catching so much of a, no, nah, almost a mimosa y smell. Yeah, they talk about um, glaze of orange juice, but also juicy apricots and plums. I'm definitely getting the apricot. Yeah. That finish on a sip, that apricot. It's just a hint of sour, too. It's not like... Mm-mm. It almost is just that um, that orange juice kind of... This is mimosa. But, yeah, like... Yeah. And it's got that, like, um, uh, like kind of sparkle to it. Like, that you get the Christmas like a mimosa. Yeah, it's like almost like a like a pog mimosa instead of like an orange juice one. You're just getting a lot of different flavors in there. They said it has uh, real vanilla beans, brown sugar, and cinnamon. A little bit of a bigger get- drink. And Thor, you got more of the chunk of your pee. Okay, well, there's wolf down. <laughs> uh, you do get a little bit of that. Oh, there's uh, a Danish ish yeah. mouthfeel yeah, flavor you, if, aftertaste. Yeah, if you're just Sippy sip sip in it. Um, You're only getting very more tart. Yeah, but yeah, once you uh, a big a big swig, it is it's like you almost it's like you almost took a bite out of like an apricot danish. I one yeah, of the I trips get, I was I on a little bit of that. I get a little bit of butter, like a flaky, flaky buttery, right? Kind of that. Yeah. One of the trips I was on, the breakfast spot does beer mosas. So you're doing like a orange juice with like a wheat, like heffish style beer. Um, I didn't have one this time, but I've had one there before. I almost would rather this because it's cleaner. The the doing that hef, I feel would get heavy mm. after a few because of that that wheat. Yeah, I also don't know that I. I wonder if even these, if I could do a few or not. Like, oh, I'm do, I'd do like maybe two. Eight ounce pours like this, like I was gonna pouring say, wine. Uh, yeah, I mean uh, a tall boy basically is what we had. So a can of this would probably go down just fine. If you're in a situation where you're, yeah, not doing a mimosa, but having yeah breakfast or out camping or something. <laughs> well, there was the time. What were we doing? Going to Vegas, I think, for my bachelor party. Okay, and we were at the airport early in the morning. And you guys were like, yeah, let's grab drinks. And I was like feeling fancy. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to get a mimosa, though, because it's early. Yeah. And you guys have like the 24 ounces of like Rainier's or something. Yeah. And they bring out the, I swear, the smallest champagne flute uh, I've ever seen of mimosa. And I was just like. That'll be $40. (laughs) At the airport. (laughs) Yeah. I was like, oh, I kind of regret this decision now. Like, it's my fault. It turns out that restaurants don't pour mimosas like I do. Right. Like half no, no, no. half champagne into a cake cup and then say, still use the pint glass, guys. <laughs> yeah. I want to well, pretend I've... I'm fancy. I'm not actually fancy. Yeah, yeah. I wish there were more beers like this on the normal shelves, because then maybe this would be an option that they would do alongside a mimosa at a restaurant. Imagine rolling up and they go, Oh hey, we have this pastry sour ale from Humble Forager. Would you like this instead of bottomless? This instead of bottomless and mimosas. Oh, bottomless. Cool. It's only it is only six percent. So, like in that aspect, it's not bad. I just wonder, also, like you really have to determine that you have a. I don't know that clientele is the right word, but like basically, right? That you have enough that are going to come through and do that. If you're doing the like legit beer mosa. You just have a hef on tap, and you're pouring orange juice in. Like yeah. that's a bit easier to like maintain, I think. Well, the bottomless mimosas, it's the same trick as the uh, whenever you're in Vegas and they got the free drinks. You always order the beer because the bottom bottomless mimosas. By the end of your brunch, you're just drinking orange juice with yeah. a splash of champagne. And when you get the free rum and coke in uh, Vegas at the table. You're just drinking a Coke with a splash of rum, at least if you're getting a beer. I know what I'm getting. 6% the entire time. Or on the other side, you're not getting uh, spiked with something. It's way stronger than you thought it was going to be. Also, the beers you're getting at the Vegas craps table are not 6%. No, they're not. Um, You're getting just 
Coors Light. You got to stay hydrated constantly. Exactly. Yeah, it's got. There's probably some electrolytes in there too. Well, it's we were all one so of the times. So they need to start serving Norway. At yes. The, uh, crab yeah. That was that's was that even six percent though, or was it four? That was like. No, I thought they were all five. Four. Right? Yes, five. Uh, like they were I got all four or five standard. in my head, so we'll call it four. I think half. it's four. Um, yeah, I really like this Humble Forger, this this one. And I, I think, though, Chad, you do have a good point of like, that. can we get them to be a little more common? Like, I think I mm-hmm. might, the pastry might have thrown me off of getting this. But now. Just on the label? Yeah. yeah. But, but even any kind of just a normal sour. That we've had, we've done a few that were kind of sour. Like the, the raspberry sour yeah. from uh, Lucky Envelope. Yep. Oh yeah. Having that available at brunch time, that would be really cool mm. to see. Well, and we've talked about. Oh, I it. see. I see your point. If we can catch any of this weather down in Portland, oh my yes. gosh, like this brunch ish. Yeah. In the oh, morning to start the day. Would this be... with like some breakfast tacos or yeah. whatever, like yep. breakfast burritos. Yeah, this would be a perfect way to start. Gosh, yeah. So, uh, I, so I should probably go make sure I get uh, my hand on a few more of these. Or something similar, yeah. If you can catch them fast enough, because, yeah, we're two weeks out. I still need to put on vacation for that. I just did today. I put in, I think I put in for it. So. For Friday? Yeah, it Well, I did also have to put out that text. Hey, we're recording, right? Today was the Monday we said we were going to court on, yep. right? Brian and I both forgot. Nice. I'm Ish, surprised we showed no. up here on time. What? So, no, I didn't forget. Oh, I forgot. You told me that you'd be leaving your work, which is like over an hour away at like four. So I thought I had enough time to go pick up the kid and go do a quick dinner at Chipotle and then pop over here. Well, turn, come to find out, you're like, yeah, I'll be there about 4.30. And I was like, oh, that oh, is. I just plugged it in when I left. And yeah, I got out a little bit earlier. Uh, I don't carry my personal phone when I'm in the office. Which, all right, fair. Um, Staying distraction free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't carry my personal phone when I'm in the office. So yeah, it was that. I had a barrage of text messages from you guys. I'm going, oh yeah, no, we're recording. <laughs> I guess I'm not going home uh, right now. Hope and then, I hope I told my wife that. Oh, uh, well, I had to call her on the way and remind her. Um, by remind, I mean inform her because I don't know that I told her in the first. Tell place. her for the first time. <laughs> uh, and then one from her. Hey. I'm thinking about getting this printer. What do you think? And 20 minutes later, another text message. Yeah, I just went and bought it. Like, you, you took too long. You didn't, you didn't even give me a chance to respond. <laughs> yeah, I know I needed it. It's a business expense, so whatever. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's done. Check that off the list. Yeah, taken care of. Well, I had to turn in my printer for work, too. Oh. So I got no car, no printer. And I don't really need a printer anymore, but she does. We... So not my business expense, if anyone's listening. Her business expense yeah. is paying for it. We have one, but the like upkeep on the ink, we just got real bad about it and have not used one for years. Do you know what I figured is it's a little annoying, but is the workaround for us? We're, again, we're not doing it for business. It's like right. the few times where like some medical stuff or something's like, hey, you got to print these out and actually sign them. I was going to like the FedEx place, yeah. but even if you like go as fast as possible on the computer, you're still walking out at like five or six bucks. It costs you to print yeah. like eight pages. Uh, public library. Oh, really? Yeah. There's one that you don't even have to use. You don't even have to put in a library card. So we, yeah, had printer. I was using the HP Instant Ink. Mm. So it just sends it automatically. Does it tell when you're out? Or yeah. is no, it just, it, it's it, not like. It, it tracks it. It knows when you're running low. And you'll get oh. a package in the mail. And you go, what is this for? Oh, you're about to run low on ink. But it was wacky because I was printing like the max pages per mm-hmm. month. Uh, so I had just boxes and boxes of ink. And then when I left, I'm like, sweet, I got all this ink. No, you can only use that ink. On that. In that printer. Not even on that printer while you have that account open. Nice. Oh. So I'm like, what do you want me to do with all of these? Like, the oh. ink is coded to your account? Yeah, yeah they actually. So did. I can't use it on a different printer. I can't use it on the same printer if I had opened a different instant ink account. Yeah. Uh, they're uh they were kind of, they were in the news the other day. Basically, uh, people had third party workarounds, and then they now they closed ran a, them. They ran they ran a update over yep. the internet yep. to the printer. Now you can't use it anyway. We're with Epson now. Yeah, 
Oh man, there are probably there are probably podcasts dedicated to the screwy ways. You could probably work printer. around it if I had yeah. enough. Or you just go buy expertise. a new fifty dollar printer every time you need one because the I ink is in wish the printer. It was that cheap. The, um, that's how long it's been since I've had to buy a printer. That I think that fifty dollar debt. Oh yeah, it depends what you needed to do. But I mean, between my wife and I, we probably do five hundred pages a month. Whoa! So what? She it's bookkeeping for oh, oh yeah, the company. Yeah. So that she's printing printer. out invoices <clears throat> and all that stuff. So see, and for me, it's like five pages a month, maybe. Uh, the other trick is I would just go to my brother's house and use his, especially when he's not there. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So, I just finished the last of that uh, Coastal Sunrise. Yeah, I'm. I. I if there I wonder, was more, I would. I would. Go I know, after right? Glass. I would go for more. Um, I wonder about. I saw seven versions. I wonder how long they run for. Do they repeat versions? Um, my guess is no. My guess is yeah. They're probably it's like a seasonal. And they yeah, because they were one of those when I was on there. They are one of those uh, breweries that have a lot of beer. Oh. That they generate, kind of like a Hubbard's. I'm only seeing on Untapped. They only have 82, so I don't that's, know if they're that's still a lot of only. It's still a lot of beer. Yeah, only is is not. I mean, that's like some of those other ones were like. Oh, and it's specific, so you can scan to learn more about this Coastal Sunrise. Yeah, I think oh. they, have, they have they have they have multiple different ones. So I they might run at them the same time, concurrently. But uh, let me go back. Enchanted Island, Cobra's Fang Imperial Tiki Sour, Passion Fruit, Marionberry, Pineapple, Tangerine, and Hibiscus. Hibiscus, Hibiscus. Uh, I think oh that's yeah, so they so niche, coast, niche. So Sam Awa. Mm-hmm. Uh, so coastal, they um, rotate. The flavor profile with whatever is available in season, fruit wise. Oh, are they using oh, like yeah. actual fresh, yeah, fruits to make it from their website? Coastal Sunshine is our rotating series of fruited sour ales, which incorporate ingredients both local and globally, depending on seasonal availability and ripeness. So, if I zoom in, oh yeah, here's a different one: tart. Oh whoa, tart cherry. Cream cheese, marshmallow fluff, graham crackers, and vanilla bean. Mm-hmm. But the oh, it's Coastal Sunset is this yeah. one. So there's Coastal Sunrise and Coastal Sunset, both same idea. Ro- rotate through the flavors with whatever is available. Huh. Kind of a cool idea, which I like. Yeah, their um, all of their artwork on their cans is kind of this similar like watercolor. Yeah, like. Bob Ross inspired. Uh, yeah, I'd, I could probably up. I could probably take the words off and put some of these up as posters in my house, and it's it'd be not the first one. We've been saying. My wife would actually not. That's what I'm saying about this one. That's what I'm saying is I I wonder how long before she's like, hey, where did you get these? Like these are really well done. And be like, ah, so it's from this brewery. Like it's their it's actually their can art. Did I tell you about that? So I like taking uh. Awkward pictures of my wife, like when she's either sleeping or making a funny face. And then I used to just text message them to her. Like randomly. randomly. She's like, you need to delete that. You look like a llama. Uh, I put one in our downstairs guest bathroom. I printed it out, put it in. She had bought this picture frame like years ago. And it had like the generic stock photo. For in, in your downstairs bathroom? Yeah. For the longest time. It, it's now still a generic stock uh, photo. I think it's empty now. So I just printed one out to the size and put the dorky picture of her in there. <laughs> and she didn't notice it for like six months. Uh, and to the point where like she put like one of these smelly things up behind it. Like a can of smell. Oh, yeah. Fresh things behind it. So she was like she, up there. She moved the picture to put it up there. Still and then notice. still didn't notice anything. It was, she was selling somebody. She's like, oh, yeah, no, this is how I make the... Uh, Bathroom smells so good in that I just heard a what, <laughs> <laughs> and, it, and of course it's somebody else is there to see. It oh, too. it had been there through like holiday season, uh, oh birthday parties. Like somebody had somebody seen has it been sitting and just never too. said anything. So love it. That's funny. No snitching. 
No. Uh, so since we are, since we do review basically every beer now. Oh yeah, we should. Sh- fridge oh yeah. This. Uh, yes, I would fridge this. You main fridge this? I would main fridge this because I do. I do brunch here on Sunday. Oh, there you go. Which basically means I sleep in and then I make myself breakfast. Oh, okay. Um, I camping cooler this one. Mm. Mm, Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've added a new. I I, like it's kind of a what your outside winter uh, cooler. I don't think I main fridge it. Uh, Beer fridge. It's uh, it's an event beer. it's like an in the tent. It's it's when I'm drinking beer in the mornings. Yeah. Or you're having be, an event or you're doing something. It's yeah. special occasion kind Camping, of. Camping, something like that. Yeah. I could, yeah, a couple of these waking up in the morning and yeah, after cooking breakfast and sitting around uh, yeah. watching the. Not a sip not, of this afternoon. I mean, it's. Maybe one. Six o'clock right now or 5.30. So we've well, had more well, than well, a sip. Course, but but. Uh, yeah, I think I. Camp and cooler. I'm with I'm uh probably with Chad for the most part. Like I do think of like the family events. I mean, even well, for like got Mother's tailgate. Day. You've got tailgating too. Yeah, but like I'm thinking like Mother's Day, like instead of waiting for someone to like get the mimosa stuff out, like I would just you know, I bring a four pack of these and whoever and wants to you and your brother in law and dad yeah. and you just yeah, pass these around instead. Well, and it's a them. it's a pastry kind of smoothie ish one. So my sister will probably jump in on that, try it out. So yeah, I would say this would be a good one to have um, for that. I think it's I don't think it's weather dependent for me. That it's more that like breakfasty kind of hanging out, like doing that. Um, I don't see myself like going to like a bar and ordering this like in the evening no. though. I yeah, no, I wouldn't put it in like a I appreciate it, but I wouldn't put it in a flight. If I'd never had it, it'd be worth trying and doing it. Um but <coughs> yeah, I don't I don't I I really like it. Um I'm I'm glad to to uh have tried it and I I'd I'd like to find more. I mean we say this a lot, but like Right. Put um, it on the road trip list. Yeah. Well, well, I do. I do have some like. I think on my wife's side's family in Wisconsin that maybe I need to see if they can just you know send me some to vor you some. Yeah. Well, well, I do have. I now have Humble Forger on my uh, Tavor like alert watch list. list. Yeah, so I get an alert. Uh, so I'll, we might try uh, Coastal Sunset here. Oh, once those, once I find one of those available. So tell me more about the. So you can just. So if you find a brewery on there and you really like, it'll alert you when you... When they have a new drop. Okay. So every brewery that we've ordered a beer off of mm-hmm. on Tavor um, has I an like alert. I like said we. Yeah. yeah. It's the royal we. Yeah. It, I use it constantly. Uh, yeah. Okay. So Cool. Yep. And, and every night before I go to bed, pop into Tavor. Is there anything new? I, you know what I'm looking for? Tulsa. I know something from there. I was just talking to people about Tulsa the other day. Well, speaking of not Tulsa, how about we review a beer? I mean, the the beer that we actually were going to review for the episode. No, I mean, let's face it. We just review two beers. Yeah. Every episode. Are you just jumping straight into beer because we just don't have anything else to talk about? Is this what it's friendships a, are? We don't a, have anything to talk about, so we just a, open another beer. We did zero podcast. Yeah, we did zero it, show prep. It is a beer podcast where we say we hey come listen to us BS for forty five minutes to an hour. It's kind of what we, we're doing. I mean, our name is beer uh, beer, beer review. review. Yeah, yeah. Yet, yeah. What eighty percent of our podcast is this just like talking Inane about rambling. the randomest yeah. things yeah. that come I, up. I only have a ten day Duolingo streak going, so you guys might oh. correct me on this. Uh, uh, Brewery Havana. Oh, I mean, no this one else can see Piglet, it. Piglet, so. Tartan Funky, Grizzlet. Grizzette. Grizzette. I know that much. I'm pulling up the thing that you what put. What language in. are you taking Duolingo in? Because I don't <laughs> think this is Spanish. Uh, I'm doing German. 
Okay. Well, yeah. well that would make sense. Yeah. Uh, this said, you wrote down it was Brewery Bavana. Oh, that's how you say that. Uh, Belgian style table ale, sour bright, downright easy grisettes are the traditional Belgian style table beer, easy to drink, but chock full of flavor. This one hits all the high notes, balancing a little tartness and a subtle funk. Uh, with the gentle complexity of our house, Saison Yeast. Ooh, I think we talked about this one last time. It was in the rotation of ones we were going to try. Yes. See, it's like Bodhi's Afa. I'm going to have to practice this one. What is a grisette, Brian? Uh, it's a great, great question. Awesome. Um, I thought we kept you on payroll for a reason. Said, yeah, I'm going to cheat, but it's a... Is it like a gose? Uh, That'd be awesome. So it's... Uh, Belgian beer that, although can be boozier, is usually low. That's the table beer idea, that it's like, I think this one's four point something. They're usually in like the three to four ABV. Um, 4.2. Okay. Um, and then it's fermented with a mixed culture. So this one's done with Brett, so, which, if you don't know, is Brettomyces. It's a type of yeast that's like, that's what's giving this one. We talked like a while back about the different ways to get um, like a sour or a funk to a beer. And for this this type, it's you you use the yeast that does it. Um, there's other like ways to do like open fermentation or like if you've heard of like a wild, that's leaving it open and get, kind of seeing what kind of happens with it. So this yeah, one is used with... with the, uh... The knock, uh, dark lager. We yeah, did. and this awesome. one they use Brettomyces to ferment it. So, um, yeah, there's a bunch of like more nerdy things you can say about it, but I mean, you're basically a farmhouse style table beer. So, because some Belgian farmhouses are going to be more in like the six to eight percent, especially yeah. if you're getting into like saisons are usually five or six. Lower, yeah. And what was this one like? Four, this four point two. Four point two. Yeah. Um, this does say they also have, they've added like sour cultures to this. So it seems like they were really kind of guaranteeing. They wanted to lock in the, the, the flavor profile they wanted. Yeah. On this. It is more sour than the coastal sunrise, but mm. it's not overly sour. In my opinion, you can smell the sour. Well, the smell is almost a little bit of that Belgian-y, mm-hmm. just kind of, um, like you kind of know what you're getting into. But yeah, it's not it's not a uh, sharp-hitting sour. No. It's, um, the finish is dry enough for me that that sour melts off. The problem I have with, if a sour is not dry enough, and there's a little bit too much sweetness in there, and I feel like I have syrup in my mouth, I don't it have a great a time. lingers a lot more, yeah. This like the coastal, there's enough tart, but it's dry enough finish, and it just it doesn't stick on the way out, so it doesn't feel like uh, sour candy. It's more just a sour like uh, a nice bite of citrus or something. So talk about this real quick, because so when I dry finish of stuff Boozier. is a lot that people I would I, talk about with wine. But I get like with red wine, I always get like my mouth feeling dry, like a chalky thing. But people usually talk about a dry finish with like a white. Correct. So what? It's cr- like a crisp. Okay, that's finish. kind of what I. Red yeah. wine would have more of like a cloying. Yeah. Feeling in the mouth. Okay. Kind of yeah. six around a, a dry finish is more of a. You drink it and it almost evaporates. Okay. Yeah. From your palate. Okay. And the way it makes sense in my head is c- coming from the beer side. It's. How syrupy it is because sometimes on a boozy beer you want kind of a syrupy finish to almost like when you have spicy food you want a little having a little bit extra fat helps spread that spicy out throughout the entire dish mm-hmm. so it doesn't hit, just hit you at once same thing but on sours there's this i i've had it i grabbed a sour and it was just a little bit too sweet and just became candy. And it was like drinking a 16 ounce starburst. It was just like, eh, too mm-hmm. much. But um, the piglet from, what was that? You can do it. Grisette? To the piglet Grisette from 
Three. Yes. How, how do you pronounce the B H? I think well, I just said I just do. I just went Bavana. Oh, I was trying. I was trying to throw the H in there. Like ba- Bre- Oh, okay. Brewery Bavana. Yeah, Bavana? that's that's okay. my guess. Um, but enough about um dry. What dry means to me? Yeah. No, it's helpful. Oh, so the other thing too is so this is uh, this brewery is out of North Carolina, Raleigh, North Carolina. Um, see, and this is what we're talking about. That last one we looked at, eighty-two beers on Untapped. These guys have two hundred six. So this, yeah. Well, and that number is deceiving because how much? Oh, for how, sure. how long do they make them for? Yep. And how long have they been there? Yeah, and that's with some of the ones that have the five hundreds. I think they're doing one-offs. That they're making one beer of that type, and, and then they're never going it. back to it. Well, and that was – sorry, I'm on a tangent again. But that was uh, no, Cloudburst proceed. here in Seattle would do – like they were they were never going to repeat a recipe. Um, and I've heard of some others that talk about doing it. It turns out people eventually like certain things, and they want them to come back. Uh, I feel like – we could have gone away with the never repeating a recipe uh, when we were brewing beer because we could not could not make the same beer twice. We could have just co- chalked it up as a gimmick and not a could not replicate it. Yeah, not a brewing deficiency. Well, that's we ended up just chasing the one that we thought was our best one and trying to always recreate it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, this is this is good. It's a different style. Obviously, the <coughs> the first one with the pastry and the different like fruitiness. Um, I probably would have rather have this one first. Yeah, because yeah. it's hard to um, it's a lot lighter flavor profile. Yeah, and I don't coastal I sunrise. Don't want to compare them, but it's hard not to when you just had them so close together. Right. Um, but that's the wonderful thing about beer. You find out the order that you want to drink beer. That one, like, like now that we know, okay. If we know we have to roll the beer. Oh, right. We're drinking oh, yeah. that beer second. We got to do that better. Um, it's always interesting to watch people when they do their flights. Like in which How they, they go drink after them. them. Yeah, because. Light to dark. I think. No, it's not light to dark. You shouldn't. But that's what I was going to say yeah. is like, that's how like you kind of know. And I started that way, light to dark. I karate chop method it. Just whatever you feel like. Just. Well, I tend to. I don't finish. No, I do a taste one. of all of them. Do a taste of all. And then, like you said, you do almost like a draft. Yes. All right, I'm going to finish this one. You finish that one. Um, but this is one where, like, if you're going light to dark, this is almost going to wreck your palate for some of the next beers that you're going to have. By having that sour, having that kind of, like, mixed culture thing, that if you then... If you did a taster, a little sip of this. And then we into like a porter. Yes. Or even if you go into like brushing your teeth. an amber because it's the next darkest. Yeah. You're going to lose out on a bunch of the flavors of the amber because of this one kind of dominating your mouth feel. Like it's hmm. been a, a couple of minutes since I've had it, but I can still feel that like tart, like, um, sourness in my mouth that I would have to like you know I gotta reset hop- it or something you'd want to like a hop water on the sidelines uh, that's, not, that's not a bad idea yeah I mean it's part of the reason of like having you know pretzels or something too that probably not only also does be it- a, this would also be probably good with brunch too eating food with it to kind of <sighs> this one could pair well I mean it is table beer yeah, I just I, I can't, nothing heavy though. I can't see any. No, I couldn't eat anything heavy with this without because then I I probably could, but then it would just dominate. I would the be flavors in, in that. I don't so, know enough little, to know what this would pair well in, with. Eggs but, Benedict. Yeah, mm-hmm. I was thinking eggs or salad. Uh, an eggs Benedict. Uh, so you just got a little of the ham, but the mm-hmm. hollandaise sauce, the English muffin. I think this would go. Which puts it then into a brunch beer as well. I almost, I don't think you should with a beer like this. Like, use a generic, not good 
as good half, but like this is almost what you could also like mosa with. Like, but you're it. I, to me, there's not enough citrusy I would, I like the. Of, oh, that's what I'm saying. Cry. You don't want to do that to this. Um, but it still being that kind of tartiness kind of does create that. Um, I forgot where I was going with that. I don't think it was that worthwhile. You were going to say that word, weren't you? <laughs> no. No, I was not going to say that. Yeah, I like this. This is good. Um, Ooh, there we go. It is not. Go ahead. It's not a frequent one for me. Um, farmhouses are ones where I'm going to grab one, like in a taster a flight, every time I go somewhere. Um, it's just not going to be like my go-tos, but I do enjoy them when I have them. Um, so this is probably just a occasional beer fridger for me. Occasional beer fridger. Um, I'll drink it out of your beer fridge. Mm. I mean, it's, it's fine. If I'm going sour, I talked about staying in the lanes a little bit. It's a little bit too delicate for a sour. What do you mean? For me. The flavor profile, it's a little bit too much of a delicate flavor. Okay. So a sour, I want something a little punchier. It's it's good if you had it and you offered it to me. Mm-hmm. I think I've said that about 100,000 times mm-hmm. at this point. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not going to turn it down. It is a good sessionable. So I guess if you had a couple of these instead of the Coastal Sunrises, True. you're going to be getting to lunch a lot uh, in better shape. Um, It'd be interesting to go to... I mean, it's a Belgian beer. Go to, to spend time with someone who, like, where does this fit in your, like, day? Where right. does it fit in your thing? Is it just, I mean, I know that traditionally, you know, it was, has been around for hundreds of years. But, like, how how do you fit this style into it? I mean, we have, like, oh, we do light beers at tailgate. We do, right. you know, the coastal sunrise at brunch. We do, you know, like, yeah. where does the, where does a grisette fit into their... And I'm half tempted to chill the other one, let it hang on the counter for an hour, see what opens up. What, what opens up as it gets warmer. We should have served it warmer than it was, even though mm. the emergency beer chiller worked pretty good here. Yeah. Um, I would probably put this in the holiday cooler. Which holiday? Uh, like is this a winter? I, I don't see this necessarily as a winter. That's why I, I made the, up. I the throw. I throw this in. Cooler. I throw this into the. It's a wild card. Fourth of July cooler. Hmm. Okay. Because you might have that weird cousin or weird uncle that shows up, that wants that weird beer. This, that's this you. Is the weird, I know. This is the weird that's, beer. That's us. Me. I know. We're the it weird is. cousin, the weird uncle that shows up, and we'll drink a weird beer. Yeah. Fourth of July summer festivity. Put it in there. So if uh, you're looking, you're fan- fishing through a cooler of Coors Lights and Miller Lights, and you found this, and you, you would pull grab out this, this. This. Oh God, I'm I, drinking you know that. I, I, don't, yeah. I don't think I disagree with this you on that point. Pink can. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I think uh, if I'm digging through a can, a cooler of just those, and I see that, yeah, I'm taking that. All right. No, I agree with you on that one. That is the one though that probably like, it's totally <sighs> true that just somebody, somebody brings like their one thing. Because they just don't trust that they're not. There's not going to be anything other than like that's their backup, backup beer. Macro like, loggers. Yeah. Well, you better bring some of those to Portland because there's going to be lots of macro beers. Which yes, preloaded. Uh, yeah, but that's the other thing though. Like, macro light beers are our table beer. Yes, like that's the way we treat it. Yeah, it's hyd- It's hydration. And when it spills because somebody wasn't paying attention, nobody cares. No, because it didn't cost you like six dollars for a can. No, yeah, you you bought it in a thirty bomb, and you know it's a buck and a quarter a piece or something like that. We'll talk about it down there when we record. Hopefully that catches. But concerts this year, yeah, should be good. As long as we get dry weather, I know it's it's not. We're not close enough yet to see. But it does cool a lot. In, I am not in the car driving to Portland. That is still not soon enough to call it. Oh, from 
where it could go. Of, but I'm feeling of, good. I'm feeling good. We're going to get a little bit. Of, we're going to get some thunderstorms here. Get a little of that moisture out of the atmosphere. Should dry up. Shows late next week or mid next week. It's supposed to get down to like mid sixties again. But mid sixties is fine That's as long perfect. as it's dry. Yeah. yeah, as long as we're not worrying about wearing slightly uh, over waterproof cast and shoes. 70. Yeah, that was. I am bringing my giant boots just in case. I'm bringing it waterproof. Into a bog again. Yep. Uh, I've, we've talked about it before, right? That we're doing this race no, on the pod. I think we've alluded to it, but yeah. So, um, oh, when did this come out? We are. It'll be before then. Yeah, yeah you're down. So, so um, it's coming out on the twenty. I think we're a week ahead 24th. of time. Yeah, twenty fourth. So, the weekend after Memorial Day. Well, well, number one, we're in the Pacific Northwest, uh, it, and we are race fans, NASCAR primarily. primarily. Um, but they're they don't come up here. There's nope. There are not any premier tracks that they come up here for. Sonoma that. or Las Vegas would be the closest to. Yeah, and so well, if you're doing Vegas, I guess yeah, technically that's still closer in Fontana. Um, but there is a road course in Portland, Oregon, that has been used by Indy before. Yep. Um, so Indy Still has. Do, a, right? I've been. To, yeah, I've been to that race before. I've been. I went before when they were in the split of like Indy and Cart. Okay. Um, and then Indy came back there and has done it for a few years. Last year was the first year they sent the Xfinity, which is like your lower GD. level. I AAA. Yeah. Your AAA. Uh, cars, and so coming in there with that, so we were like, "Hey, it's a race, close-ish. Let's go!" Yeah. And it rained the entire time, entire time, in between two stretches of beautiful weather. Not beautiful. It just, oh, yeah, it, it just, it just stopped and... raining. No, it the the afternoon after the race, the next day, it was nice. After it torrential downpoured all morning. On Sunday morning, it torrential downpoured, and then we were up in Vancouver. Oh, yeah, the next day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. Was, yeah. But I like was home and showering and drying off. Yeah, but that, so that's our one thing. We just, I know, I know that we're known for rain up here, but we, we can hope that the first of June, we can at least get a little less rain, right? Just a little less. But be anyway, nice. we'll be down there. Yeah. Uh, in the infield mm-hmm. uh, for the weekend. Uh, most of us and trying to record a podcast. So, no, we will record. We will record. We'll see if it actually comes out. We're going to put the good vibes into the universe, and the universe will reward us with beautiful weather. There you go for the race weekend. All right, one can only hope. Well, we're going to get back to the cracking game because our glasses are empty. Hopefully, yours are too. We'll catch you next time. Hey, Odin. What's up, buddy? (laughs) He's like, we're done. You knew you here for the sign out? Let's hang out. I didn't think it would be the recorder that would have a malfunction. I assumed it would be the podcast hosts who will have a malfunction. If you are picking up what we are putting down, please like and subscribe on your podcast platform of choice and reach out to us at a beer review on social media. If you have a beer you would like us 